Okay, so we are starting our inequalities unit. And if you don't have access to a printer, you might want to go back and watch that video where I explain um, how to take, well, I'll just tell you right now, take a screenshot of this worksheet on your phone and then go to markup if you have an iPhone or whatever, however you write on a photo, um, do that. Unless you have graph paper. I mean, graph paper is fine, but it, or I mean, printer is best. If you can print it, great. If you can't, though, take a screenshot and then write on the photo, and then you can just send me the photo with your graphs drawn on it. And that would be the easiest way. All right. So, any hoosers, let's get started with this one. We take a look at the first one. Now, we know how to graph this if this thing right here were an equal sign, right? It's just in y equals mx plus b. I know to start at the y intercept and then follow my slope. Well, we're actually kind of going to start off that exact same way. Here's the difference, though. These are all inequalities. So that means, if you remember, if it was y equals, I don't know, let's just say it's 2x plus 6, okay? When you graph that line, okay, what this line represents it are all the solutions to that equation, right? So if x were 0, then y would be 6. But if x were 1, then y would be 8. So there's not just one solution to this. There's a whole bunch of them. And they're all represented by this line, right? This line, that's why it continues on forever, because there are an infinite number of solutions to this that just keep going and going and going and going. So now that we're looking at inequalities, that's a little bit different. Because um, think about just inequalities in general. If I say, hey, give me a number less than 10, right? So if I said, why is any number? And I said, give me a number less than 10. Well, there's an infinite number of numbers less than 10, right? You could say nine, you could say 8.2, you could say negative 500, right? Any of those would work. Um, could you say 10 though? If I said, give me a number less than 10, can you say 10? No, you can't. If I said, give me a number less than or equal to 10, could you give me 10? Of course you could. So that's going to play a part here as well, whether we include the actual line or not. Um, but basically what happens when you graph inequalities in two variables, like you see here, um, so you're going to graph the line and then the line is going to break the, your whole graph into two parts, a part above the line and a part below the line. And essentially, your solution lies in one of those two parts of the graph. Okay, so let's do this one out and kind of see what I'm talking about. So you're going to start by graphing it like normal. So I'm still going to start at the y-intercept. So in this case, that's positive 5. And then I'm still going to follow my slope, which is a negative 1 third. So I'm going to go down 1 over 3, put a dot. I'm going to go down 1 over 3, put another dot. Okay. So normally I would just connect the dots and I would move on. Here, you have to be careful. If your inequality symbol has the line underneath it, so if it's one of those two, you are going to connect your dots with a solid line. If you have um, a greater than or less than without the line underneath, you are going to use a dotted line. So that's one of the first things that's different about graphing an equality and an inequality is you have to decide, am I gonna use a solid line or a dotted line? And what's the purpose of that? So um, remember a, a few minutes ago, I was just mentioning, give me a number less than 10 or give me a number less than or equal to 10. So basically, if you connect with a solid line, that was a terrible line, I'll try again. Oh, let me use the line feature. Hold on. Oh, uh, well, that's still pretty bad. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so bad at the, there we go. That one's good. So if I connect with a solid line like that, that means that I'm including the line as part of my answer. Okay. But that's not all of it. I'm just including what's there. So in this particular case, I do have a line underneath. So I do want to use a solid solid line like I have here. If I didn't have that little or equal to bar underneath, 
I would have made this a dashed line, okay? But I didn't have to in this case. Now, the next part is you're not actually not done yet, but you have divided your graph into two, the grid into two regions. You have a region up here above the line, and you have a region down here below the line, okay? One of them is where all of your solutions lie, okay? So what we do to represent that, first of all, let me add arrows to the ends of this, because that does go on forever. Um, so in order to represent all of the solutions, we shade one region of the graph, okay? So how do you know which region to shade, above the line or below the line? Well, turns out when your graphs, when your um, original inequalities are written like this in slope intercept form, you can actually just look at it and know which way to shade. It's just that easy. It's gonna be a little bit trickier tomorrow when it's not written in slope intercept form, so we'll go through it at that time. But for now, you're just gonna look right here. Let me switch colors so I can, you're gonna look right here. If y is greater than, like it is here, you're going to shade above your line. If y had been less than, you would shade below. It's just that easy. So y is greater than, I need to shade above the line. So that means I'm literally going to fill in everything above that line. And because the line's solid, it also includes points right up to the line. So I mean all the way, right up to it. Okay, now when you are doing this work, I just need you to give me a couple scribbles so I know which side you think holds all the solutions. Give me a squiggle above or give me a squiggle below. Okay, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I know I'm not going right up to the line, but that's just because my stylus isn't the best. But yeah, it goes all the way right up to and including the line. And there is the solution to this inequality. Okay, so let's try a few more and see if we can get the hang of this. So let's delete all this. I'm gonna slide on over to number two. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by graphing it just like I normally would. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start at negative four on the y-axis, and then I'm going to follow my slope. In this case, it is a positive one, so I'm just gonna go up one over one. Okay, put a bunch of dots. And now I'm gonna ask myself, do I get to draw a straight line and connect these, or do I have to use a dashed line? And hopefully you remember what we just said, if I don't have the bar underneath it for your inequality symbol, I don't here. So I'm going to use a dashed line. So I don't actually get to use my cool tool. I'm gonna to switch colors though, so we can see it a little bit better, and maybe I'll make my line thicker. Let's try this. Okay, so I have to use a dashed line because I'm saying everything right up to the line is included, but not the line itself. Okay, so if I say give me a number less than 10, you can say 9.9999999999, and that works. That's everything right up to the line, but not including the line itself. Okay, and then I just have to shade one region. So let's look over here. Y is greater than. So that means I'm going to shade above my line. So I'm literally just going to give a squiggle that shows me everything above this line works as a solution. By the way, you can check your answer here. Everything that you shade over, you're saying is a solution. So you can take any point, any point at all that you have shaded over. So why not pick zero, zero, because it's super easy. If I plug in zero, zero into my inequality, it had better be correct. So let's see, is zero less than zero minus, uh, I'm sorry, greater than, is zero greater than zero minus four? Well, zero minus four is negative four. Isn't zero greater than negative four? It is. Now, check this out. If I plug in a point that's not part of my, that I didn't shade over, so I don't know, let's just pick right here, five negative two. You don't have to do this, but I just want to prove my point. Five, negative two. If I take this and I plug this in, this should not work because I did not shade over it, so it should not be part of my solution set. So let's see. Negative two. Is that greater than 
5 minus 4. Well, negative 2, is that greater than 1? No, it's not. So that didn't make any sense, and it wasn't supposed to, because 5 comma 2 down here is not part of my solution set. So that's just another way that you can double check yourself. Um, but like I said, if it's in slope intercept form, you can just look at it and you know to shade above or below. Y is greater than you shade up. Y is less than you shade below. Okay, moving on to the next one, number three. Here we go. All right, we're gonna graph like normal. Let's start at a negative two. And then I need to follow my slope, in this case, down six over one. So down six puts me off my grid by two, but I'd be about there. So why don't I instead go up six and back two? Okay, so uh, there's my points. Am I going to use a solid or a dotted line in this case? Hopefully you're saying solid because I do have that bar underneath my inequality symbol. Let's see, ooh, look at this, uh, not great. Okay, hold on, I'll try again. Uh, okay, that's better. All right. Okay, so now I have my line drawn and I'm going to look back here. Y is greater than. So I want to shade where above this line. Sometimes when the lines are really steep, it's hard to tell where the above part is. Here's the easiest thing you can do. Just put your pencil anywhere on your graph and then just, um, just move your pencil up. This is the side where y is greater than. Isn't that neat? And again, if you're ever not sure, just pick a point, pop it in, make sure that it works. Okay, let's try the last one for, oh, and you know what? I'm gonna do one more because there's one more example type that I wanna show you that uh, didn't happen in this first four, but that's okay, I'll just make another one. Any hosers, y is greater than negative four. Hmm, you might be thinking, what am I supposed to do with this thing? I have no idea. Well, ho or maybe, oh, maybe this is popping into your head. I hope so. Notice how I only, if I only have X or I only have Y, that's a hoy box. So in this case, I'll be dealing with hoy, which means it's going to be a horizontal line at negative four. So I'm just going to go ahead, go right to negative four, and I want a horizontal line. Is it gonna be a solid line or a dotted line? Look right here, and then you say, oh, it's gotta be dotted because I do not have that line underneath. So I'm gonna make this one as best I can. There we go. And then I'm going to look at, um, the inequality and it says y is greater than negative four, so I want to shade above. Y is greater than, so I shade up. And that's all there is to it. Okay, so one more I do want to show you because what happens when the line is so steep that it's a vertical line? How are you supposed to shade above or below a vertical line? So I want to just uh, pretend for a second that this question had said, x is less than negative four. Let's just say it said that. Okay, so hoi vox, uh, I only have an x, so this would be a vertical line at negative four. Okay, and now it says x is less than, so I would normally be shading below the line, right, if my variable is less than, but there is no below, right? I only have the right hand side and the left hand side. So which side is it? Well, look at what it's actually saying. Go back up here, look, it's saying X is less than negative four. Where are the X's? Remember, these are the X's. Where are the X's less than negative four? Aren't they less than negative four over here? Yes, they are. So in this case, you would be shading on the left hand side. I hope that makes sense, okay? So please try five through 10 and uh, let me know if you have any questions.